Okay, this week's video is back once again to talking about our LEGO Mindstorms EV3 robot setups. And we're gonna continue to use the Chromebook version at this point in time to show you how you can do various testing and developmental steps using your EV3 and your Chromebook to begin developing more advanced programs. Welcome to Robot Fact. What we're gonna do now is set up to test our EV3 to get a sense of exactly how far it moves with a single forward revolution of its tires. So we're gonna need a couple of things. First, we're gonna use a printable ruler, and I found one on printableruler.net that is a 12 inch ruler, 35 centimeters, gives us a accurate reading on where, how far our bot travels, but more importantly, we can cut this out and tape it directly to our work surface. What that's gonna do is, is it's gonna allow our EV3 bot to roll over the ruler and not be, and it, it shouldn't affect anything. So, we're gonna need our printable ruler. I'm gonna provide a link in the video description. We're also gonna need some way of marking a start line. So that could be some type of painter's tape, masking tape, a post-it note. Once again, something that's going to be just very simple that's going to allow us to, to line up the leading edge of our bot with a starting point. And then the last thing that we're going to need is some kind of tape to affix our ruler to the work surface. So I'm going to get the works, I'm going to get the ruler cut out, I'm going to get it taped down to the work surface, we're going to go from there. Okay, with our ruler in place and our start line taped, you can see that we have the start line taped at exactly the zero inch mark. We are gonna go ahead and set up the front of our robot exactly at the start line. In this case, in this setup, my EV3 bot is the furthest forward point on the EV3 is the leading edge of the tire. So I wanna make sure that the leading edge of my tire is lined up with my start point. Now I'm gonna to go to the Chromebook and I'm gonna build a simple program that's gonna allow our EV3 bot to travel exactly one revolution and we're gonna mark how far it travels. With our Mindstorms software booted up, we wanna go ahead and create a new program. Now this is gonna be a very simple new program we are simply going to drag move tank up and snap it in place. We are going to leave our settings at exactly where they are, 50% power, both left and right going forward, one revolution or rotation, and we want our robot to come to a brake stop at the end. That's all we're gonna do here. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pair the brick with my Chromebook and I am going to download the program to run. If this is the first time that you're trying to do this and you haven't gone through the Bluetooth pairing, I'd recommend you watch part one where we actually talk about pairing and programming. Okay, we are now going to go ahead and run program one. Okay, the program is loaded onto our EV3. We are gonna go ahead and make sure that our bot is lined up to where it is exactly on the start line. We are gonna tab down and play program one. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to use a marker and we're gonna mark right at where the front end of the tire stopped. Your best bet will be to have another straight edge handy and line that up with the front edge of the tire and you're gonna mark a line straight across your ruler. Now we know where test number one came to an end. 
We're now gonna go ahead and repeat that for two more tests. You should be able to see that what we have are three separate lines. We have our first test in black, our second test in green, our third test in blue. Now, why would there be three separate test lines? Why, why wouldn't the bot have landed in the same spot every time? Well, we can have some very varying degrees of imprecision that happen in our setup. When we set up on our original line, we can have some problems. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a little bit of math and we are going to take the average of these three scores and see what we would say in a final program that one revolution is, how far our bot travels in one revolution. There are two different ways that we can measure and plot this out. The first is in inches. Now the ruler that we're using here has eight divisions between the inch marks. So for instance, this is five inches, five and one eighth, five and a quarter, which would be two eighths, three eighths, a half, five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, and six inches. So if we look at our initial test, we can see that from the front of the tire to where the stop point is in the initial test was six and seven eighths inches exactly. Okay, so that gives us an initial starting point for test number one. Test number two, where we have come now and we've landed between two of our eighth inch marks. Now, if we had a ruler measured in sixteenths, we would probably be able to be a little bit more exact, but it looks like we are just about halfway between seven eighths and one inch. Well, if we turn seven eighths into sixteenths, it's 14 sixteenths. So we're gonna go ahead and call this six and 15 sixteenths. So test number two is gonna be six and 15 sixteenths of an inch. For our last test, test number three, it looks like we are at seven and right on the one eighth inch marks. So we're going to go ahead and call test number three seven and one eighth inches. Now, these mixed number fractions are difficult to work with. They, we don't necessarily feel them intuitively. So our next step is that we're going to turn them into decimals. The way we take a fraction and read it as a decimal is by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So, if I want to see 7 eighths as a decimal, I take 7, divide it by 8, and I get 0.875. So I can go ahead and write this then as 6.875. I can do the same thing then with my other fractions. So test two becomes 6.9375 and test four becomes, I'm sorry, test three becomes 7.125. And now all I'm going to do is get the average of these. Gives me a grand total of 20.9375. I am then going to divide that by 3, and my average is 
0.979 inches per rotation. Other than our test and average model, which is certainly one way of trying to figure out an unknown, the other thing that we can do is if we have unknown to work with, we can do our calculations that way. So in this case, I know from resources that exist that the EV3 basic tire is 56 millimeters in diameter. Well, if one revolution is 360 degrees, and I know that a circle is 360 degrees, now I can use the geometry of circles to figure out what distance my bot will travel in one revolution. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the mathematical constant pi and I am going to multiply that by the diameter of my circle to get the circumference of the circle. So the circumference of a circle is 360 degrees or one revolution. So if I use the mathematical formula pi times distance, I will get the circumference of my circle. The other way you can see this written sometimes is 2 pi r, meaning that twice pi times the radius of a circle. So if you have the radius measurement of the circle, the point from the center to the outside is our radius. The distance straight across at any equator is the diameter. So we know from our reference material that our diameter is 56 millimeters. So I'm gonna take 3.14 times 56 millimeters, and that is gonna give me the circumference of my tire. 175.84 millimeters. So that gives me an initial sense of how far my bot should travel if everything is lined up perfectly at an initial starting point. Our project now is to see if the degree of accuracy with which we can program our bot to keep it from knocking over an object. So the way we're going to do that is that we are going to pick a distance that we are going to set our object up from the start line of our bot. And I am going to set our dear friend, Bessie the cow, up to where the leading edge of her body is 25 centimeters away from our start line. Now we are going to make sure that our robot is set up in line with the start line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the math. So now, if we need to figure out how many revolutions or rotations of the tire we need to program to get as close as possible to our cow without knocking it over, there is another very simple mathematical formula we can use. We take the distance that we want to travel, and in this case D does not stand for diameter, it stands for distance, divided by the circumference of our tire. In other words, how many millimeters our tire travels in one revolution. So, what do we know? 
when we know that we want to travel x number of revolutions and that x revolutions is going to be equal to 25 centimeters divided by the distance that we figured out earlier which is 17.584 centimeters and that is going to tell us that we need to travel 1.42174043 revolutions 4 2 3 revolutions what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and see if we can program our bot to get as close as possible to the cow without knocking it over. So we are going to use the move tank option. We want to go ahead and have our power level set at 50, positive 50, both left and right. And now we are going to go ahead and using the math that we already calculated, say that we want our bot to go 1.42 rotations. If you remember, the math said 1.423 revolutions. Well, we want to have a little room for error because we could have an error in our setup. We could have an error in... Um, in where we set the robot up, we get an error in where Bessie is set up. There are some factors in play. So we're going to go ahead and round that down to 1.42, and we are going to upload that to download that to our bot and see how that works. Let us go ahead and see how close to our cow we can get. I would say that we did a pretty good job. So once again, the math works, the programming works. We can use the math or test and retest to figure out exactly how accurate we can get with our programs. Okay, that's it for this week. I think that we've done some really good basic explanation of how to do modeling to design our programs. So we have, we've gone over two options. We've gone over the, the three test sort of val validity method and we've gone over the straight mathematical validity method to give us a sense of different ways that we can build our programs. In the next video in the Mindstorm series, we're going to start going over how to integrate sensors with our EV3 robots. So, as always, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for taking your time and watching these videos. Please like share, subscribe. If you want to make sure that you get the updates every time one of these videos posts, in addition to subscribing, click the little bell icon next to subscribe and you will get a notification. Any thoughts, comments, suggestions, ideas, things that you want to see, share them in the comments. I will get back to you. And as always, thank you again for joining me to have a little bit of fun with learning how to build robots, and do a little bit of scientific reasoning and all the other things that we have fun with here. So thanks for visiting. We'll see you again soon. Cheers.